Alright, and here we go. Right into the Reno, right into the Jackson, right into the Reno Jackson action. Uh, against Midrange Paladin. Not Secret Paladin, it's Midrange Paladin. Six and Rado. Well, both non players, known for specific things. Um, Rado, known for being an extremely strong data player. Six for being actually known for the same. Both playing, uh, being insane, good ladder players. And as we know, there is the Reno Jackson Warlock out there, or there has been the Reno Jackson Warlock out there on the ladder. And that's probably also the reason, like, why Sixu is playing it. Well, and mid range Paladin, I don't know exactly about that. Perhaps Radu had, like, specific, specific reads, but. I mean, mid range Paladin is also what I actually brought to this tournament, so. It's probably a conclusion if you want to also counter some kind of control warrior or other kind of um, yeah control warrior decks. Would be one thing. Another would be that it's also generally strong against specific or certain kind of aggressive decks. Okay, you want the bracket? Yeah, I have the bracket link actually here. So I will just paste it directly into it. So here's the here's the link bracket. Hmm. What are you saying? Uh, da -da. <laughs> okay, it's over. <laughs> it's over quicker than we thought. Oh, perhaps it's not. It's actually pretty close. But yeah, Xixo apparently not being amused by the fact that there are two coming out of yeah. And I cannot really blame him for that. I mean, it's pretty crappy if those uh, actually come out. Oh, MC Tech. So yeah, pretty pretty interesting here actually. Yeah, I mean there could be a Hellfire, but the Hellfire actually would simply kill Xixu. So there must be the MC tech coming down. He gets the two two. There is a Molten Giant. There is a Defender of Argus. But there is also Mungurungurungurungur out there. And Reno Jackson. What a pity. I mean Reno Jackson could simply heal for twenty five, but sometimes he heals for thirty. Yeah, yeah, you know the joke already. Yeah, um, I know, but it's like. If he hits for 30, it's not that good, right? Okay, so... Is it already lethal some kind of? What is it? BGH? So how much uh, how much damage is there on the board? 11, 12. 12 damage on the board, 4, 6, 9, 18. So, if Mergonger comes out? Yeah. Not that Mergonger. Yeah. 4, 4 takes what? Ah, do you, would you really use the 4, 4? What could you use? You could use... Uh, Probably you have to use the 4-4. Oh. Four, 4 using BGH. Uh, what's the attack? How was the attack? Yeah, makes sense. Chili minibot, pressuring incredibly. I like it. The Hellfire can only kill him himself, so... Yeah, like Six was actually forced to play Reno Jackson, but there is also somewhat like 
a lot of damage on the board, a lot being like something like 15 damage. So perhaps we will even see like a silence coming down on the Murloc Knight here, which would be... I mean, as you know, that's not that great, right? I mean, if you use your silences, no. Like, Sixer decides for the Reno Jackson. I also think that's better. Not not playing the Owl. He needs to tap. He needs to draw these options or the solutions. But I have to say, like, in a Highlander, the chance of actually drawing solutions are also pretty slim, if you want to say it so. Uh, it's again the 2-1. Hmm. What's that? Okay. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it must be <laughs> kind of a spectator bug. Like, the truth server has been played. But it's not there. I mean, there is a Hellfire, but the Molten Giant is already out, the Reno Jackson is already out, so what, uh, hmm. we can only hope that will change. So, we just, we just imagine this stuff is being there. So, we just imagine there is like a True Silver here, and we just imagine there is a Lothip here. We just imagine. So, I see, this is the third old Merc guy. Yeah, that's GG. We can, we can, uh, we don't need to necessarily respectate, I think. Unless the bug still persists. No, I mean, this could get rid by BGH. Probably Dr. Boom has already, no, no, here, here he is. Okay. So there is still a lot of hidden in the shades. Uh, from the shadows I come, and probably the true silver which is non-existent will now probably attack Lothab and the Tutu will probably also attack Lothab. This is probably something we will see now. Oh, the three won't attack uh, Lothab. Yeah, uh, perhaps we could also respect it. I mean, perhaps, yeah, but perhaps not. Um, let me check how it goes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean we can respect it. We can respect it. Uh, what's that? I mean I don't want to uh, disturb the players. So. Mm. I don't want to tell them that they should re-invite me if they are in the middle of the deciding turns. It's like a little bit of a kind of a, hmm, how do you say? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it cannot be helped. I really don't want to do this stuff because I know how, how bad it is if you are in a tough spot and there is some re-invite stuff, but yeah, I guess. So, what is it? Yeah, it's already pretty over, right? Okay. Oh 
Okay, so that makes it 1, 0, 4, Nihilum, uh, G2. 4, G2. Bam, bam. Yeah. No, that's good stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that because, like, of course, our team didn't change. Like, the team persisted the same. So, good stuff to see. Very good stuff to see. So, 1, 0 for us, respectively. Um... So we, we know that um, okay. So there's Druid against Druid now. We already see Harrison Jones in Xixos Druid, which obviously won't have in the mirror match, but that's also why you have these Mulligans. Ancient of War on the other hand quite decent in this matchup, so that's quite a good one. Okay, there is. No, that's interesting. Like, in the Druid Mirror, yeah, Emperor could help if he's unhandled. And Sint of War also printing of uttermost importance. On the other hand, rather with like a kind of faster version, perhaps it's even the aggressive version with Fail Reverse and things like this. And probably the aggressive Druid version is favored over the standard Druid version because Fairy are obviously being quite strong in this mirror match. We see Xixo actually deciding to innovating out the shredder, but then on the other hand relying on actually drawing from the top. Rather on the other hand, if it's really aggressive through it, he will have the ability to curve out nicely and probably even overrun Xixo before he can even deploy a very good Emperor Thorison. A good Emperor Thorison being somebody who actually stays and then also being able to make use of the discounted cards. Ooh, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, that looks like a Reno Jackson warlock. <laughs> uh, druid, sorry, uh, druid. A Reno Jackson druid, guys. No, that's awesome. No, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. So Xixus is actually bringing a Reno Jackson warlock, which we have already seen some. I'm not sure how awesome that is. But Sixo also, uh, yeah, brought the Reno Jackson Druid, which is very interesting because, like, people could say that he doesn't really perfectly fit in the Druid, but in this in this particular case against aggressive Druid, he's like extremely good. Um, what the, what the hell is a? Sixus is playing Chiefs for what, what the, what, what in the world is going on? What? I mean, I think he's owning R Radu here with the Reno Jackson stuff and and Sorison and Innervate into Ancient of War, but whereas the Innervate, by the way, was also extremely needed, um, but but what what's What's the purpose of the Jeeves in the deck? We see Junior Jackson, we see Sorison, we see Engine of Wars. So a lot of expensive cards. Could this be perhaps with Astral? No, cannot be right. It can never be with Astral Domination or whatever it's called. So what is the purpose of Jeeves? I'm just so astonished to see the cards here. Oh, okay, that was that was an important one. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Rather making uh, small use of uh, good RNG. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean. Do you think... Yeah, okay, whatever. The Gs. I, I just cannot... I don't know. Like... It's just so interesting, this Gs. Having also, like, high curve cards in the deck.
Do you think? Yeah, it must be a Highlander, right? It, mu it must be a Singleton from Six, so like that he only runs one off. So Reno Jackson can actually heal whenever he wants, right? Yeah, it should be. But it doesn't mean that Six was completely out of the woods, despite this Reno Jackson, because I mean, okay, now Rado cannot actually have the combo any longer, so. Ah no, no again. So, hmm, Folgen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just don't know, guys. Like, it, it, everything is very confusing for me right here. So, the Jeeves actually only helps Rado because, like, he was out of cards already. Now he actually has the ability to draw to the combo. And once the combo arrives, Reno Jackson decreases tremendously in value. So, I mean, we will take a look and see. But I'm, I'm really curious how this will pan out. I mean, there is a lot of coming down, but and there is also one card draw. Uh, but on the other hand, there is always like, <laughs> I mean, G is actually is drawing two cards for Rado every turn, especially in this aggressive druid. It could even be more. I mean, but I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Rado will be able to play at least two cards here, but perhaps even three. And then if if it would be three, then G is simply doing so much work. Well, okay, it was only one card. It was only one in this case. So how would you play that? You don't like to overtake the 0-1 flame tongue totem, right? So the play here is simply to attack the 0-1 flame tongue totem, preferably with your, I don't even know, perhaps with your flame juggler, who knows. Um, but then definitely going for the MC tech. It's like... Oh right, there was also Lothab. So if there wouldn't have been Lothab for sure, Rado could have drawn more than more than zero cards. Yeah. I have to say it's not looking good for <laughs> Xixu. Not at all. He simply does die to the combo. And the funny thing is he even dies to the combo even if he would play Reno Jackson. Yeah. So, oh, uh, by the way, uh, huh, interesting, I was so commenting from only one perspective that I forgot to actually, oh yeah, but Rado also didn't give me a re-invite. Perhaps we just take a look from this perspective for this game. I mean, it's also not, I mean, it's something you usually don't see, right? Like a comment from one perspective only. So, today we make like special special. Yeah? Special, special, guys. The production value is real. Okay, so here we go. So Rado doesn't have the combo, otherwise it would be already over. And the funny thing is he doesn't even have not only the combo, but he also doesn't have, like, even a roar. Because even a roar would have, like, in combination with a Sabertooth Tiger or something, would have already been able to kill. Um, okay, so Jeeves is <laughs> looking at the whole situation here and is thinking, hey, let me draw two cards this time, please. And it's not only about that, but Sixo will also be required to, to play Reno Jackson very soon. Okay, so that's two cards. Zack, zack. And if you take a look, 13 cards left. Chances are not that low that eventually... Um, the combo will be drawn. Hmm. The BGH being of quite big importance because the Reno Jackson nearly has to come down here. So if you think about it, Reno Jackson would have meant there would have not been a lot of stuff other than that coming down. But in this case, he can simply BGH Reno Jackson and um, actually seize the board control. Sees back the board control. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, this is the new age. The age of explorers, guys. And that being said, Rado has four cards in his hand. And um, the Shade is already dealing like with the combo 20 damage, so... Okay, yeah, that's the end of the Shade. There's a Fell Reaver. And Rado also knows that there is only one BGH in the entirety of the deck, of like of Sixus deck. So, oh, that was a okay. So what it actually means is if if Rado um, Sixus want to get rid of the Fell Reaver, he would need to send both things in. But I think that's also not that much of a problem. You can also simply let it live. I would also let it live. It's so good to let the Fell Reaver live. Just killing everything else. You don't die to combo yet. And the Fairy Reaver will actually mill the remaining cards of your opponent's library. And then it's GG. It really doesn't good it really doesn't look good here for Rado at all. I don't even think there's any chance left. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, there is not much to be said. Like, <laughs> let's see what the boom bots will do, uh, depending on. Yeah, probably that first. Then he sees what goes out of the deck. Second Savage Road, that's important. Um, swipe is gone. The Boombots not hitting. The Boombots not hitting. And Ragnaros? If the Ragnaros doesn't hit and there is a Force of Nature, it could get actually close. Ooh, sick, sick, sick. You kidding me here? Force of Nature already bringing to, to, to one. If this is Force of Nature, I mean... Well, actually it is Force of Nature. And it's not only about that. The Ragnaros has to hit because Sixo actually didn't do anything. Like, how can this be that this game actually gets even close at all? Are you kidding me here, guys? No way that this game actually ever gets close. What if Ragnaros hits face now? Then it's over! It's... Ooh, what? What, guys? This game? No, unreal. No, Rado can kill now, right? He can kill now. Tell me that he can kill now. What should Rado have in his hand that he cannot kill now? What? Like, wh what should that card be? Which he couldn't play. Wrath? No, he would have cycled Wrath always. It must be the kill. What, what should this card be? I don't get it. What could that cut be? What could that cut be? No minion, so it must be a spell. But there are no spells which he would have not played. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Is it next level BM or <laughs> no? Cannot at all. It's strange. I was so sure that that Rado wins now. Hmm. What? Hmm. Okay. Uh, what? Hmm. What could have this been? Mm. 
No, it seems uh, <laughs> it seems we will have Xixus perspective. It's not bad, right? I mean, it's not bad, guys. Yeah, we don't need to see both cards to know what's going on. Actually, it was even a little bit more exciting, perhaps. I'm still, uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the puzzle, like, which took, like, which card is it which you would not play? Ah, you would probably tell me in chat anyways which card it was. Hmm. Innovate, Force of Nature. Which card would you, even Wrath, you would play Wrath for to cycle. So... Hmm. All oh, right, there is plus one plus one on the minions, right? But wouldn't yeah, probably, probably that was the. If you would have had spectator mode on, then we could have seen both. Okay, but what about um, this year? Yeah, controversy against patron. That's pretty pretty bad for the patron because, well, can't, you can imagine why it's so bad for the <laughs> patron. It was already a bad matchup beforehand, like earlier but now it's just like so super bad i wouldn't even wonder if Xixo would have like reno jackson in his war warrior perhaps also being a singleton Okay, good. I was just reading the chat. Mm. So, what's going on? Um, the camps. What? The camps is not a problem, guys. I know what to do. Okay. Yeah, with Rado we will just not look at his cards at all this this match. We just anticipate what's happening here, and yeah, what's happening here is probably that, yeah, unfortunately Rado is getting probably, I wouldn't say owned, but it doesn't look very nice. But then again, I also said in the other game that it wasn't looking very nice for Rado, and because of some, some RNG, it actually suddenly looked very nice for him. Um, so, never say never. I mean, I can still not believe that, that first of all, the Ragnaros really hit, uh, like, missed twice. All the, like, yeah, that there was not nothing, and then even, even being so close, Rado unfortunately didn't get the right answer, so that was quite... Unlucky even, I would say. Yeah, here, I mean, Xixus Warrior List. It really, really, really looks suspiciously like a <laughs> like another Reno deck. And uh, you could say they were troll decks. Yeah, I mean, troll decks, troll decks. I mean, define troll decks. I mean, they all three target actually specific kind of decks, which are actually face decks. So if you actually play three decks, which all have like Reno Jackson in them, chances that you actually counter face decks are pretty high. And countering face decks doesn't even mean... I mean, there are diff specific and different kind of deck types which you'd simply nearly prevent from having any kind of chance. So those deck types being Freeze Mage, for example. 
So with Sixos, like if, if this is a Reno uh, Jackson Warrior, which I wouldn't even exclude the possibility because we saw a lot of stuff today, then this deck obviously has an unlosable matchup against Freeze Mage. Um, if you think about uh, a Druid with Reno Jackson, well, I don't even know um, how good that is against um, a Freeze Mage, like whether it's really much better than a normal uh, Freeze Mage, but it's, it's definitely a, a normal Druid, but it's definitely positive against Freeze Mage for sure. And the Reno Jackson Warlock is perhaps also positive, uh, like pro definitely positive. The only question is how much positive against Freeze Mage. And against Face Hunters, they are also all favorite, so that's that. Yeah, we are seeing uh, the combo coming down here. The patron combo that is. So as I said, never say never. <laughs> Deathwing. <laughs> Boom, 12, 12. <laughs> yeah, so if Sisu would play it, I think yeah, the troll would be real. But, um... There's Grom, and Grom can already deal, well, some damage. But he is opting in to use it against the patrons. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, as we know, there is a Deathwing. So what Xixu could also do, I mean, first of all, he can simply clear like this. But also, simply keeping the Deathwing, so just in case, if, it's, if, it, get, if it would get mandatory later, that's also always a consideration. But yeah. Like using Grom as one removal, then execute as the other to actually then hit with the death bite. Makes a lot of sense. Armor Smith is being of really no concern and Rather's library already pretty run down to three cards. So yeah, it's <laughs> I mean even even with the entire library there would probably not be enough pressure to finish Sixo. And especially not after revenge or respective Deathwing could come down. Frozen Berserker is coming down. And there is even the answer for the fiery Warrix with a with a Harrison even. Okay, Justica. I think. I think Rado's question is how to set up Grom the best. Grom actually being able to potentially deal 12 plus 5 is 17. But it simply won't be enough, especially not against what Sisu just played. So the rest 21 life. Even Grom would only deliver 17, bringing Sisu to 4 if Grom would come down. Even then. Uh, getting two patrons. Yeah, I mean with three cards. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah. The combo and. Hello, Bayum. Of 
Okay, so that leaves the Reno Jackson Warlock behind as the last deck. Against Druid, what will probably happen? Ah, innovate, innovate. Yes, how could have I forgot this? Yeah, it's innovate. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Okay, there's already, well, a lot of dough in the hand of Xixo, which is <laughs> Healer, Helfer, Sengen. <laughs> yeah, the decks, guys, the decks, that's next level BM. Bringing three Reno gems, uh, Reno decks, and then then beating your opponent with those. That's that's a true next level BM. Now ah, that's a hellfire. <laughs> hellfire, pretty, pretty good, guys. Pretty good. There's Reno to replenish life. There is a molten giant to actually get it. If there is like over, uh, overboard, mind control, demon wrath. I don't know, like what was hellfire? Yeah? Okay, yeah, super, super good hellfire. Yeah. You could have even considered like using MC tech. If you get a sapling, okay, you just do hell for an next turn and if you get something of the others, it's even better. It's a close call. I'm just wondering whether he will ever get value of the MC tech again. But we will see that. So there's a lot of taunt incoming, implosion, demon wrath, all the good cards. Hmm. Ha <laughs> Okay, they're actually double molten giants. Yeah, that's that's actually Yeah, I mean this is also like I mean you know like the build like my build was also, yeah, with like always with double molten runs because you want to play them first to stabilize and then you want to play Reno Jackson. So that's that's kind of an interesting one. So he would have not even been uh, able to re re replenish life. Yeah, lots of to shut the action down. There is no lethal possible. Even the Druid of the Claw would only be able to deal 11 damage in total. So that's like 6 plus 5, it's 11. Uh, Savage Roar not being castable, so Lothab really shutting down the action here. Making Molten Giants and Reno Jackson so much better. Both of them. Yeah, Demon Wrath being <laughs> also pretty good here. Hmm. You could also go... F yeah, no, not really. You don't want to risk anything more. So, I guess... 
Hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah, perhaps it's not. Hmm. That's seriously difficult. You could you could also go implosion and and yeah, exactly that. Like you could also go implosion in wrath. The turn before the combo can hit makes a lot of sense. Also brings you into the ability to be able to play, for example, tap into Molten Giant and Reno Jackson. So, how Xixo played it, he can actually choose between different options. Ooh, Shapeshift, that's, that's a really bad one. Probably not even attacking the face. So just attacking one of the imps. But definitely not something you will <laughs> you wanted to see as a druid. But it makes the combo much more likely because like what would Kart should rather keep in his hand. So it's really very likely the combo I guess. But combo not being good enough if well, specific cards coming down, I guess yeah, tap Molden Giant and full heal. Rich, 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 19 lives later. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that helps. That helps for sure. Ah, the pressure continues. Um, 14, there's indeed no burst in Sixus hand, so there's no concern. Well, 2 for damage cuts, but it's still not good enough. Yeah, so after that, Sixus will still be off lethal. Can he hide or what? Oh no, we can actually hide. But yeah, so this is being like 14 damage, so with a 4 it will be 18 damage. Pium, 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 pium. Yeah, 18 damage, so he's taking the Elven Archer. Just making it completely safe. Sixu has the complete board control here. Yeah, Siphon Soul, everything. And that makes it a 3 1. A little bit unfortunate for Radu. Sixu takes the win. And is probably. Oh, right. I give you back to the production, guys. Oh, yeah. Here, here you are, yeah. So I give you back to the production, guys. And um, yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah, cool.